So, we are starting with uh, jagged structures. So, in your previous class, I was discussing the two types of launch methods that are normally used. So, one is the uh, barge bone method. The barge bone method is normally used for launching small jackets. So, this is actually used for small jacket. So, small jacket launch and this is a dedicated barge. So, barge is a dedicated barge. Now, these barges are normally called, they are not used for carrying cargo, but this is called a deck. The barge you have to design is a deck loading barge. So, that means barge is to be specially strengthened on the deck. This is called a deck loading barge, not for carrying cargo. Deck loading barge, deck strengthening has to be done. Now, this you have to do deck strengthening, that means for taking offshore structures. So, deck loading barge with of course, with ballast tanks instead of hold below the deck you have ballast tanks. So, this is one type of vessel that is particularly used in your offshore industry. Another type that you will come across is called a OSV. This of course, this is not linked with your uh, jacket launch. OSV is another offshore supply vessel. So, these are special vessels which cater to your offshore industry. Now, this actually uh, since this is uh, we are talking about jacket structures. So, this of course, we would not talk much, but these offshore su supply vessels they are categorized by by clear deck area or rather you write clear off deck area for transporting Normally, this is pipes, but it can be also offshore structures and they are characterized by having very small freeboard. So, offshore supply vessels normally they are very small freeboard because that will be an aid to your the crane. You can take this structure very smoothly if you do not have a high freeboard. These are the offshore survivors. Anyway, so coming to these uh, deck loading barges, so here actually you have to do this type of barges, they have special strengthening on the deck and they have special stability requirements. So, this I was talking last class. So, this is called a deck loading barge. So, you have special stability rules. Now, those of you who are interested in this stability rules, they can uh, consult your ABS on deck loading barges, American Bureau of Shipping, what are the uh, dynamic stability criteria for jacket on top of barge, okay. That is the most crucial, that is load that is on the barge 
or there are definite stability requirements. Stability requirements means your GZ curve. So, what is the area under the GZ curve with a jacket on top of the barge? So, there are two criteria whenever you are designing this kind of barge, we have to do extra strengthening on the deck and extra strengthening at the forward end of the barge. Why? Extra strengthening at forward end. So, these are some of the requirements for launch barges. Because once you go to site, say your jacket is being loaded in this manner, so it is hanging out and the narrower end of the jacket will go down into the water first. Normally that is the case, the exact reason I do not know, but they do it like this. So, this end normally goes down into the water after you trim the barge. Now, once you trim it, the whole weight of the jacket will come onto this end. So, this is called a rocker arm. So, this is the speciality of this barge. Now, this rocker arm is not a small structure. So, rocker arm width, rocker arm width can be as high as 12 meters. This distance can be as large as 12 meters. It is basically a beam over which the jacket is going to slide. So, in the sliding mode, the whole weight of the jacket will be distributed on the 12 meters of your rocker arm. So, that is why this part of the forward end requires extra strengthening because of that. So, this has to be done. So, you calculate your coefficient of friction. So, mu is equals to 0 0.025. With this, you find out the value of tan theta. Tan theta is equals to mu. From this, theta is equal to tan inverse of this. You can calculate the trim angle. You trim the board until the jacket starts sliding. Now, jacket is going to slide with the narrow end first. So, then what will happen? So, that means now the process of launching and then you have to do up end the jacket, jacket is not it. So, jacket has to be in this condition in the upright mode after it has been launched. Now, what you do when it is in the floating mode? So, normally these jackets, now these jackets are not particularly buoyant, you know. The other type of jackets, this is the barge jackets, they do not have sufficient buoyancy in the column. So, it might float with very small freeboard in this manner. Now, this you have to be pretty careful. So, before you start your calculation using max surf uh, or multi surf, whatever it is, you please find out the total buoyancy. So, simply calculating the, con the size of these columns and bracing members is not enough. Why? Because your jacket af after it is launched, it has to float in this mode. So, you calculate you know, most of the contribution to buoyancy will come from the four columns, but also your these bracing members will contribute say hardly say 20 or 30 percent of buoyancy. So, anyway, so, but it has to float like this. That, that means, just after launching, the whole jacket should not go and settle on the seabed. Hmm, that would be a great disaster. So, anyway, so after this is uh, in the floating mode, now there are various compartments inside the columns, you know. So, these have to be flooded. So, especially the uh, wider end columns, you know, the part of the columns of the wider end you flood. That means, we, this is always connected to a Whenever you do this type of launching, you do not go the jacket to be swept away by the ocean, you know. So, you always try to hold this at one end by a 
rope or by a, this is called a crane vessel. So you have to requisition the services of a crane vessel. You always tether it to a crane vessel. Normally you have witnessed launching, isn't it? The last I think you went uh, Tuesday to Calcutta, you witnessed launching, but was the vessel tied to any uh, structure on the this thing, shipyard? I do not think it was tied, isn't it? But that is also quite dangerous, you know. That means you do not have any control over the. Now, when this is in floating mode, you keep on flooding these columns. So that means automatically your G will go down and your GM has to be positive. Now there are two sets of calculations you have to do. One set of calculation has to be done for the jacket itself. So jacket for various angles of heel, for heel angles you calculate GM. Whether you, and you see whether you are having positive GM or not at all stages of upending. So this is called the stage of upending. So launching and upending actually goes together. So this is uh, this is actually your erection phase. So for all for heel angles, you calculate GM till it actually settles down on the bottom. Now it has to settle at the particular location on the seabed. Now this has to be done precisely at the particular location. So that means not only one crane vessel, but there will be other barges, etc., trying to pull the structure at all different sites, and then you locate your structure, and then it goes down. Now after that you have to drive the piles, okay. Obviously by driving the piles the water actually and these will be punctured. That means these are the plates, they will be punctured, the water will be pushed out and the piles will be driven through these columns. So that is what is done normally. So here actually the naval architectural calculation is jacket for heel angles GM, you construct GZ curve. Now GZ curve is always constructed with what? Construct GZ curve. Now this you should know what is your kg value, kg of jacket. Now GZ or GM that is calculated is always calculated or referred to a particular loading condition. In ship stability, particular loading condition, now this has to be done. So you have to, now loading condition that means the two things they specify, one is the displacement and the other is the kg, kg value. So this you always note whenever you are doing your stability booklet. The stability booklet has to be endorsed by the surveyor and immediate, the first thing that he will ask you is what is your kg, what is the ship's kg. And second thing is he will ask you what is your display, what is the ship's displacement at which you are doing the calculation. So these things are to be noted. But this is the operation that is normally done. And uh, so after the jacket has been sighted on the seabed, then you start driving the piles, okay. Now this is one aspect. The other uh, aspect I have told you is while launching, the whole weight of the jacket comes on the rocker arm and you should see that the you are doing this operation in, this operation has to be done in calm calm waters, uh, there should be not be any storm, you know, otherwise this the barge is going to heal and you will, the jacket might come off. So these are to be remembered. Now the other 
this is called barge launching the other method is called self floating jackets now in the self floating mode if you go that means the jacket is built now another point i want to tell you is that when you are taking the uh, jacket onto the barge you know you have to bring this on at even keel otherwise you cannot take it so with the key side or the dock side so this always has to be at at the same level so here actually this is your this is called a sliding way i don't know you must have witnessed all this in your shipyard and this is called a launch way now the launch way has to be brought at the same level as the sliding way now here actually what you can do now as soon as you take the jacket on to the barge that means a portion of the weight of the jacket is coming on to the barge so immediately the barge will start trimming so bombay high jacket the weight of the bombay high jacket is 1350 tons so you divide and this length is i think 80 or 90 meters so you divide so per meter how much of the weight will come so immediately you will get a trimming moment so when this comes that means the barge is going to tilt and this will lose its alignment that is the sliding way and the launch way is immediately going to lose alignment so one thing you can do is i told you there are number of ballast tanks inside the barge so there are number of pumps so immediately you try to change your ballast position in the tanks so obviously you have to remove ballast water from the forward end isn't it because the forward end you have to give more buoyancy you need to shift it to aft and try to bring in the throughout water so you try to bring this in even till there is one way and the other easier way is now suppose the next to the dock side you don't have that much of draft say your dock side normally at the dock side you will find the draft is pretty low okay now what you do you, you try to fill this a dock side with sand and take the barge on the sand so that means you are on more sure footing and then you pull the barge onto the jacket so that is another method so these are two methods that are normally but that means here actually you should have not deep draft but shallow draft obviously if the draft is very deep you cannot do this shallow draft launch so this is one method that means you can do this now the other method that i was talking about is the bigger larger jackets so they are obviously of the self floating variety now here actually the jackets are actually made in sections now you need not make them on the slip way you can easily make them on a draving dock now all these are actually shipbuilding terms a draving dock because it looks like a graveyard so that is why it is called a draving dock or sometimes this is also called a dry dock now here what you can do is the jackets i told you they are normally constructed horizontally now see you simply build your jacket on keel blocks now these are of the self, these are called self floating jackets self floating jackets that invariably these are larger in size now here the launch barge category i even in this method i have told you that there are two things that you have to make the calculation is hydrostatics and stability now in the hydrostatics you check your buoyancy 
So, uh, naval architects have to be very thorough about these two methods, hydrostatics and stability. Yeah, nowadays actually you have, you can take recourse to all these software, that is your max serve, multi serve. Now the, the thing that you have to do is, you create a AutoCAD file, in SOLIDWORKS you can do this and then you just, uh, mm, for various drafts you can plot your hydrostatics calculation, you can immediately get your, the volume and the moment of volume. Otherwise, uh, these structures are not ship shaped, you know. So, you have to individually calculate for all the columns and then add and all these things. Anyway, so this um, graving dog, you build the jacket in this fashion, but these jackets are characterized by large diameter columns. Columns are particularly larger in diameter. The reason is you have got to have buoyancy. So, large diameter, column diameter has to be large. Now, these are made in such a way that uh, after this is stored away from the dry dock, it is able to float on the two bottom columns in this mode. So, this is your draft. So, you have to calculate the buoyancy and stability in this mode. So, uh, here the difference you can see in the launch barge method, uh, most of the jacket is after being launched it is under the water, but here actually most of the jacket is out of the water. So, here the bottom columns contribute to your buoyancy, this is your buoyant columns, buoyancy columns. Now, you may find that this, it, it is unable to float in on these two columns, the whole jacket is going down, then you have to add further buoyancy pontoons for insufficient buoyancy. So, insufficient buoyancy you might get, now if that is the case, add buoyancy pontoons. So, normally if you witness this kind of launching, you will find buoyancy pontoons. Buoyancy pontoons to columns. These things you can do or sometimes they call this, instead of buoyancy pontoons you call floaters. So, these are sometimes inflatable rafts or rather you write inflatables. So, these are tied to these columns and they give you additional buoyancy. However, so, when you are offending the same process you do, you ballast the these columns by ballast water and then it will be offending and you remove the buoyancy pontoons. So, all your uh, hydrostatics and stability calculations, you may have to take account of these buoyancy pontoons. So, that is one way and the other process is the same, excepting that these, normally these are large jackets. So, these are already, these are fabricated in sections. So, built in sections. Now, the problem is that, say this is your sea level and this is your sea bed, 
Now this is one part of the jacket you have correctly positioned at site. Now on this you are going to locate another part. So this is number 1. Now on this you have to position this. Now here actually if you do this, this is very tricky because unless this is positioned on to section 1, you cannot weld because these are very large structures and slight discrepancy in location will cause you the welding to break at this mode at these junctions. So this is number 2. And number 2 you have to site just above number 1 and at the proper location. So this is done by a method which is called telemetry. Uh, civil engineers they normally do this, underwater telemetry you have to do. So this is exactly you have to fit. Now for now all this is taken care of by your crane from your launch barge. So your launch barge will always be there. The other part that is to be remembered is then when this goes below the water, you have to keep this in what kind of buoyancy. As soon as you immerse this in under the goes below the water surface, see buoyancy is you will be encountering a buoyant force. A buoyant force is going to act on this part. This structure has its own self weight. And these two forces will give you undesirable moments. The moment is actually the whole cause of the trouble, you see, of placing this structure on top of one. So this you have to get rid of, undesirable moment. So you will find that the whole structure swinging, uh, etc. And even if you do not have waves or current, because you have not neutralized the moment. So this is always advisable, you keep this in a neutral buoyancy mode or it is called neutrally buoyant. Yeah, this is what the neutrally buoyant is the objective for this kind of thing. Now this kind of erection problem you will not find in your smaller jacket. Smaller jackets are more safer, but in this case the positioning is a bit tricky. So that is the section 1. Now after that you take section 3 on top of this and after you have finished it then the whole the deck module the here is a diagram in which your deck module is transferred onto the jacket here you can see so this is after the jacket has been positioned on the seabed now here they are driving piles so these are pretty long piles through the columns there is a pile hammer and now in the next they are bringing the deck onto the top of these piles. So the piles, there is a stabbing cone which I have told you. So these are co conical in shape and this exactly fits onto the top of the pile and then you weld this. So this thing is, now you have not transferred the deck module, this is called a deck substructure. In civil engineering they call this a deck substructure. So this is the me method of launching and positioning of the jacket. Now coming to the other category is the piling. Now piles actually you come, there are various categories of piles. The jackets are normally called piled structure. 
So jackets is another term for a template. So what is the function of a template? So this template is actually a file guide. Now piling, if you want to do the, the simplest category is a vertically loaded pile. Now there are various categories of piles. The one that the simplest category is a vertically loaded pile. Now if you want to understand the meta mechanics, you will find that the pile has to be driven. A pile by itself will not go below the seabed. So suppose this is your seabed and the pile is you have driven like this. Then what is what are the forces coming onto this pile? So your base reaction is Q B. And this is your pile length. So, if we want to understand the mechanics, and this is your pile diameter. So, this is actually a much simplified version, but if you want to go into the details, that means you have to do the if you take the section, normally I have shown a section with a uniform thickness, but your thickness is going to vary with depth. You will find actually a steel pile, these are the various as you go, the various thicknesses will be there welded. Now at the bottom of the pile you will find that you have to drive the pile, so you make this sharp. So this is your cutting edge of the pile and this is a hollow, this is a hollow pile. Now in civil engineering they have various types of piles, but anyway, so we are mostly concerned with steel, steel tubular piles. That is the present scenario. Now, the previous, in the previous, uh, in 1947, the piles were not steel; they were made of wood, so they were called wooden piles. But nowadays, since jackets are made of steel and the larger jackets, they should have steel tubular piles have carrying capacity, large load, uh, right, load bearing capacity. So this you have to calculate. What is a pile, how much load is going to come onto this pile? Now based on that, you calculate your pile diameter thickness. The other important parameter for pile determination is the length of the pile, how much is going to be your pile length. So how to calculate this? Now remember that this is what I am, calculation that I am <coughs> telling you is for a vertically loaded piles, but later on you will find in your offshore technology class, I will talk of another set of piles which are called laterally loaded piles. So this we will, I will not talk about in this class because that will consume lot of time. So these are called laterally loaded piles and also your problem is not going to be simple with just one pile because you will find jackets they do not have a 
just uh, this is a very simplistic diagram that you have it is there. So, that means he has driven only one pile and these piles are separated by say 10 meters, but here actually the larger jackets you will find pile groups. So, this large pile will be surrounded by smaller piles. So, that is called a pile group and if you have a pile group there will be interaction between the piles. So, our study in your later class we have to study what is called a laterally loaded piles, pile groups. So, this me mechanics you have to understand pile groups and not only that piles will have a certain batter. What is a batter? Now, batter means so you jackets you will find jackets normally they the jackets are not made of columns which are vertical. You will find the columns of the jackets are uh, two two columns may be vertical, but the other column may be slanted. Now this is called a rake or batter. So actual the jacket configuration may be like this. In actual practice, you will find this uh, now here actually you have to drive on pile which will go through this column. So, this is a vertical. Now, vertical pile driving is quite easy, but how you are going to drive a pile with a batter or sometimes this is called a rake. So, problems in our offshore foundation is tricky. In building foundations also you have piles, but normally they are vertical piles and buildings normally the vertical load is the larger one. So, this sort of pile they call this as a batter or raked pile. And so far so good and this is your seabed and here you have still more piles. So, like this it is going to come. Obviously, here you cannot have vertical piles. Now, this is how the whole structure is pinned down to the seabed. So, you have to study in the actual practice you have to study piles with batter and groups. So, you have pile group groups. So, this is the structure. So, these piles will be interacting one another especially when you are driving. Suppose you have driven this long piles after this if you drive the shorter piles you have called skirt piles that means this will play a uh, this is not the same as driving this short pile just onto the seabed. There will be interaction between these two piles while you are driving a pile here. So, that has to be taken care of and the batter actually you cannot avoid. Batter or raked pile cannot avoid because what you have done is what? You have increased base. you have increased base width. Now, base width has been increased because of stability. Stability against what? Against overturning. So, you can you have to calculate in all these kinds of jacket platforms I told you, you have to calculate the overturning moment coming from the waves. So, this has to be 
matched by a reactive force coming from the piles. So, you increase the base width. So, that means you have the momentum, you increase your momentum. So, that is going to give you a reactive moment to counteract this overturning moment. So, this is your overturning moment. See, so, this is horizontal load and this is the water depth. So, H D is your overturning moment. So, this has to be registered at any cost. So, this is the nature and this whole thing is called a pile foundation. So, in detail we will discuss this later on. Now, I have other things to discuss. Now, the point that is to be remembered is that you have another plate out here which I have not shown such that the whole structure does not go below the soil, isn't it? You have a some sort of a bearing, that is called a bearing plate. A bearing plate exists. Now, coming to back to your pile driving. So, here is your pile that I have drawn. Now, if you want to understand the mechanics, you will find that your pile has, if you start driving the pile, the immediate, the force does not go to the tip. Suppose, this is the pile shaft. Say, this is coming out of the seabed. Now, the pile has to be driven by a pile hammer from the top. So, you give a load out here that is Q and at the end you will find the load does not reach the end. So, it terminates at certain point out here. So, this section you call this section as A1. Now, if this is the situation, that means the load that you have given here is taken up by the friction load on the circumference of the pile. The load has not reached the pile tip. So, the basic mechanics is load has to reach the pile tip. Load has to reach pile tip. So, here actually the whole load you have exhausted in this length of the pile. Say, let us say this length is L1. Now, so you keep on increasing the load. Now, you let us call this load as Q1 you have given. Now, after you keep on increasing the load at a certain instant you will find the load variation is coming like this. That means, still at the tip of the pile you are not getting load, but load has increased from Q1 to Q2 at seabed or this is sometimes this is called the pile head. Now, in the next case, after this you keep on increasing the load. So, now you will get some load at pile tip. Say, this is the load at pile tip, whereas here you are getting pile head load is quite large Q m. So, in this situation, now, this is the vertical load and there will be another bearing load that is coming at the end. This is called Q p. Now, in this say this is case 1, this is case 2. Now, case 3 you can pile can be driven. So, pile will only go down into the soil when actually 
3 is greater than 2, but there is also a certain factor that means pi can be driven when that is load from top, load from pile hammer or you can say load from top has come to pile tip. And there is another big question and is able to fragment rocks, fragment rocks or rupture soil or rupture soil at pile tip. So, then only your pile will go down. So, the basic basic question is you have to break the rock at this region. So, your rock strata has to be broken. So, that is why I told you in the previous diagram I have given a very sharp edge at this end. So, the main function of the pile is to break the rock strata or rupture the soil and then the pile goes down. So, this has to be done uh, that is why you increase your load on the pile hammer. This is called the pile head load from Q1, Q2 say to a maximum will come at Qm. So, this has to be the friction load, is not it? So, the difference between two this one at pi z and this one is your friction load. So, that means the ultimate bearing load of the pi is taken up by two loads. One is called the bearing load at the bottom that is your Q B. This Q P or sometimes this is also written as Q B. That is the pile base load that is coming from here. The small arrows are your base load plus the friction load. Now, your friction load is going to occur at the surface of the pile, not on the base end, end of the pile. So, this is Q B plus Q F is your Q U is your ultimate load. This is called uh, Q B bearing load and this is called friction. Oh. Now, the equation for this is the Q B small Q B is your bearing capacity because multiplied by the area of the base that is your A B and skin friction is this is called unit skin friction F S multiplied by what? Multiplied by the surface area of the pile. So, this is your equation for a vertically load loaded pile. So, if you want to note this down, so this is called ultimate bearing capacity. So, all these things uh, you come across and uh, this is just the starting point of the pile mechanics. Now, the other point is your F s is called unit skin friction. There is per unit area. So, these points you remember. Now, after this we will go on to the other aspect is of course, the tie down uh, mechanism during transportation. 
so this is called a tie down tie down of jacket to launch barge so this i told you now when the jacket comes on top of the barge you know the barge will have its own this is called launch guard isn't it now you have to launch so this is your launch girder and say this is the column of the jacket so these will come now here you have to make some kind of a shoe like this and here there will be wooden wood will be there and this things so this is your jacket so the whole jacket which i have not drawn out here is something like this now here actually so that means there will be continuously there will be healing will be going on healing and training will be going on because of motions coming from the buds now this if you simply keep it like this it will just fall off from the deck so these have to be tied down you have to have a tie down mechanism so these are normally pipes which is secured to the deck so this side is i couldn't draw so these are called tie downs or sometimes these are called c fastenings now these you have to calculate that is what should be the amount of c fastening and tie downs so tie downs during transportation of jacket so how to calculate this now first thing is you calculate accelerations at this point and you find out the forces so force is equals to mass into acceleration now these accelerations will be different for different locations because of motions coming from the sea so again you have to take recourse to your sea keeping analysis so from this after you calculate this force then you try to distribute this over weld area you have to do the amount of welding you see how much of weld area you require to have this force so that will decide on the amount of c fastening that is required so this is the the calculations that you have to make so you have to make both global as well as local load calculations global and local accelerations has to be calculated so a lot of mechanics is there so all this in ocean engineering is not all that simple you have to calculate global and first to calculate global acceleration transfer it to local axis find out all the local forces especially at these joints for now these joints are important because you have to make your tie downs and calculate the over here but also these joints are also important because you can see they are the farthest from the deck so that will give you the motions will be more at this point 
So, here if you are not careful, then this will start cracking. So, in offshore engineering, actually joint design is very critical. This joint design at bracings. Now, this you should not forget. Now, for that you have to do n number of calculations, particularly the calculations which are important is C motions giving rise to accelerations. Next you have, so this is during transportation, number 2 you have during what? During the life of the structure that is wave or wave loading. So, here calculate accelerations from this get force and preferably at joints. So, this is one calculations you have to do. Wave loading will also give you joint loads. So, joints are, are very heavily stressed region in offshore structures. There are just two simple loadings are told you one coming from C motions, here this is the both loadings are dynamic in nature. So, both loadings are dynamic. So, here you can see that instead of static loading, the more important loading is a dynamic one. So, that is why you come across this type of calculations. Anyway, so, with this we, we, we finish the jacket platforms, now next we will come to the gravity structures. So, we will have a break of a few minutes, you can refresh your